associated with neotropical arid environments, method of scale. Thanks. Uh, good morning. So I'm going to present this work, which was part of my master thesis. And as you might know, phylogenetic niche conservatism is the tendency of closely related species to retain uh, the niche of their ancestors and of their closely related species. So <coughs> resulting in a pattern where uh, closely related species are found in the same habitats. Uh, and it can, it, it can be summed up in the sentence, it is easier to move than to evolve, meaning that species will generally track their favorite environments over evolutionary times rather than adapting to new environments. Of course, this is not always true, but uh, niches are always somewhat conserved. Uh, species will always be somewhat similar to their closely related uh, species, so it's interesting to investigate uh, at which scale niche will be conserved. So, I like to think of air environments as a nice dead system to investigate this because they have some interesting properties, uh, at least in the you know, tropical region. First, they have a disjunct distribution, meaning that species that uh, are located in these environments, uh, they are trapped uh, because the surrounding environment might not be suitable for them. And also, these environments have specialized biotas with many times special adaptations to go with the harsh conditions. So they, it might be more difficult for them to adapt to new conditions. So in the neotropical region, we will find uh, mainly two kinds of dry environments, uh, deserts and scrublands, which receive very low precipitation, typically 300, up to 300 millimeters uh, a year. And this precipitation is rather unpredictable. And dry forests, which receive uh, more precipitation, typically around 500 to 800 millimeters a year, which is concentrated in a few months of the year, so it has well-marked dry and wet seasons. Uh, so I am an arachnologist and I am interested in the systematics of these very cute spiders, so you can see that they hide themselves in the sand, they have even became famous as a YouTube video of the spider that couldn't hide. Uh, so they are very nice spiders, they cover themselves with grains of soil, so this is not actually the color of the spider, it's just because she covered it, it with the sediment. And Okay, they're very cool, but I am interested in them because they have, uh, they are not a very diverse genus. They have 26 species in Africa and America, but what interests us here is that they are restricted to and widespread in dry biomes. So they are an excellent model for investigating these questions that I was telling you before. So, if, if these are all the records, uh, for Cicares and spiders that I know. And if you take the climatic variables that are associated to each of these records and make a principal component analysis of them, you get this. So here you have the two principal components of climatic variation. And in the first principal component, which accounts for 43% of the climatic variation in the genus, uh, we can observe these two groups. And if we take this, the values of these first principal components and make a histogram for them, we can see that the records can be sorted into two discrete groups with distinct, distinct climates. So this red group over here has colder climates, dry climates, and also greater amplitude in temperatures. So generally harsher conditions than this other group, which has warmer temperatures, uh, more precipitation and also lower amplitude in temperatures. So, as you might have guessed by now, these two groups correspond to the deserts and dry forests that I was telling you before. So, records with values of principal component one lower than two correspond to desert records, and the records with principal component one values lower, higher than two correspond to dry forest records. So the question here is, these two groups with distinct climates, how do they behave in the phylogeny? Are they 
true man reciprocally, reciprocally monophyletic groups or how is the pattern? So there is not a phylogeny of the genus yet, at least a comprehensive one. So we did estimate a phylogeny for Cetiaceous spiders based on morphology and five molecular markers, including all the 20 neotropical species and the outgroup taxa represented by African Cetiaceous and the sister genus Loxosalis. And we also estimated the clade ages using a fossil socialist and also mutation rates. And this is what we found. So here uh, we have a monophyletic cicarius and a very nice pattern where the neotropical cicarius are monophyletic and sister group two are also monophyletic uh, group of African cicarius. And here we, the color codes represent the region where they come from so you can see that uh, there is a, uh, a very high geographic structuring in the phylogeny. So, for example, all the species from Brazil form a monophyletic group here in green. Uh, for example, this group is from Chile, this one from, from Argentina. And some, some countries have uh, more than one lineage, but generally the phylogeny is geographically structured. And the other thing that we can see is that the divergences are pretty old, so the group uh, has been diversifying the neotropical uh, region for at least 40 million years. Uh, so if we take uh, the mean <coughs> principal component one value for each species and plot it into the phylogeny using a single parsimony reconstruction of the ancestral states, what we observe is that the ancestral biome for the genus are the deserts because all African species uh, dwell in desert-like uh, habitats and also the, mode, the first lineage to diverge in the neotropical region. And from the deserts, the Sikaris have been have colonized the dry forest at least three uh, to four times. So it seems that they have had many opportunities to shift between the two biomes. Uh, and I think that what is happening here is that they are not constrained from, they are not restricted to any of the two biomes. I think that all species could theoretically uh, dwell in both biomes. And I think that because First, most of the lineages that are restricted to a particular biome are geographically isolated. So, for example, we have this group of six species from Brazil, but one of their closest relatives is a desert species from Argentina. And, of course, they did not, they did not have the historical opportunity to, to shift to a desert because there are no deserts in Brazil, so they cannot invade a desert from there. And the same goes, for example, for this group of Chinese species, uh, which do not have dry forests here to, to occupy. And you can see that this pattern, uh, these groups have been restricted to these areas for many, many million of years. So, for example, this group has been diversified in this region for at least 40 million years. And the other evidence I have for that is that the, there are two species which are capable of occupying both biomes. And they occur precisely in the regions where the two biomes touch. So what, we can, what I conclude from that is that uh, in the 40 million uh, years of evolution in the neotropical region, they have not been able to colonize the other types of more hidden pets that we have here. So we can think that the niche is conserved in a broad scale. But in a more narrow scale, the shifts between the distinct types of dry biomes were free. They could change between desert to dry forests many times. So in a more labile scale, in a more narrow scale, the niche can be thought as, as labile. So I would like to Thank the, my sponsors, especially the SSC, who allowed me to be here today, and my collaborators, and you for your attention. And I think we have plenty of time for questions. Sorry. There is time for questions.
started diversifying uh, their internal their diversification, but they have diverged from their more, more closely related species around 20 million. Of course, this this is the mean value, but we, I I get like large constant intervals for all these these age estimates. Is there any? Uh, is there a lot of overlap? Between these species? Yeah. No, they are generally allopetric. The, the six species from the Katinga, uh, they are generally allopetric or parapetric. Do you see any correlation in the age of the clades and the age of the biomes? Uh, well, some of these biomes, uh, I'm not quite familiar with their age of their first appearance. I know that, for example, uh, the dry coast of, the western dry coast of, of South America has been formed since some cold currents started to, to, to hit the continent. But it's probably much older than, than the age of the, of the spider. So probably the biomes were already there when they, when they invaded. Uh, for the Katinga, uh, I don't know how how old is it. I, I'm not quite familiar with the information of the biomes. But one of the questions that uh, we wanted to investigate was also the disjunctions, because uh, some researchers have hypothesized that the dry forests have been connected uh, in the Pleistocene glacial cycle because <coughs> of dry conditions. And we find no support for that because the divergences are, of course, much older than in the Pleistocene. Great talk, you mom. Uh, I have a question. So you plotted the PC value variables based on the climate, but do you have any information about biotic factors like the prey that might be in certain environments or not? You are asking if they have different ecological interactions. So I think that they are putting pretty much generally spider so I don't I don't see biotic interactions here um, as a, a factor affecting the shifts between biomes. Maybe it, it could be a factor that is uh, constraining them from invading other biomes, not uh, as spread as the prey interactions, but maybe as Maybe the other working uh, environments have better competitors, better competitors that are excluding them from the interaction. But I don't pray. I want to squeeze in one last quick question, that's it, which is in Africa, uh, are there no uh, dry forests? Um, because why, why would all the species there be limited to what you were calling desert? Uh, is that niche conservatism in Africa? I actually, uh, there are dry forests in Africa, but not in the southern, in the southern region, because they are restricted to the very, mainly to the Namib Desert and to the Bingos of Africa. So, but for the climatic values, that's why I wanted to, to do this analysis, because uh, I can put uh, quantitative. But then there are no dry forests that they could move into. Uh, no, no. Thank you very much.